What we have is the Sony A7 II, Mark II, second generation, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> What we're shooting with today is the Sony a7 II or Mark II or II. Second generation. Second generation. The first one's been out for about a year. They followed it with the a7R and then the a7S, and now they have the Sony a7 II. It's a full frame mirrorless camera, but the big difference from the first generation is the five axis image stabilization. Which is huge, and which really becomes a must have feature for pretty much every camera going forward. I believe. Yeah, it's kind of hard to go back. Once you start shooting at a tenth of a second and getting sharp images, it kind of changes everything. Yeah, it absolutely does. And it's, it's, it's one of those features that you think you probably don't need, but then as soon as you have it on your camera, it's just like, well, of course. You don't want to shoot with another camera. <laughs> you, you have to have ammo stabilization. We're here on Van Brunt Street in front of Fort Defiance, which is a, some sort of coffee shop. Food, nice. I'm not allowed inside. Josh is hooking us up. You have a lot of kind of nice little shops here. You have a bicycle shop across the street and excellent bars and a couple of really great restaurants that mostly are new within the last five or 10 years or so. I got the 55 1.8 on. It's a really nice lens, super fast. The images are really crisp. We'll review them later and see if they hold up, but so far so good. All right, this camera's got a lot of really nice things going for it. One of the main things, which is an improvement over the last version, is this grip feels excellent. And the weight of the camera, it's not a light camera, but it really shouldn't be a light camera because this is a more pro-geared camera. I mean, maybe enthusiast-geared, but it's not a camera that you're gonna throw in your pocket, obviously. It's not a camera that you're really gonna be able to just toss willy-nilly into a bag. It has a real nice weight to it. When you're holding it in your hand, it feels like you've got a good grip on it. It's got a really nice balance. And it's just, it's a really nice camera to shoot with. So we're here at the ball fields in Red Hook, and we want to see how the autofocus performance is on this camera. Having played with it for the last few days, I could say it's pretty good. Um, there are some caveats to that. It actually does better in wider apertures than it does in more closed down apertures like F16. I have the camera on autofocus continuous. I also have it on the burst speed of high. Now I am shooting raw, so it does tend to fill up the buffer a little. We'll see how that goes. All right, so I followed her and I was tracking, even shooting through the net and it seemed to stay locked onto her really nice. I'm hitting the center button and going into object tracking mode. You lock onto the object, hit OK, and then you start shooting, and it seems to track it pretty nicely. The Wi-Fi features in this camera are relatively straightforward, relatively simple, and pretty, pretty good. You have an app you have to download onto your phone. It's called Sony Play, Play Memories. Play Memories. Yeah, weird name. But what it does do is it allows you to connect your, your cell phone to the camera, and over Wi-Fi, and it's, it's quick. The downloading pictures to your camera happens very, very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the app is relatively straightforward if you're using it to download pictures. You can look at all the pictures you've taken and download them to your camera. Now, this is if you shoot RAW plus JPEG, which you probably want to do if you're going to be using uh, your phone to upload pictures if you're out in the field or if you want to show people, um, you know, if you're at a family gathering or a wedding, you want to show people right away. This, it's a nice way to do things. Yeah, and the cool thing about that is you can set the camera up to whatever resolution of JPEG you want. So you could set it to something like, you know, five megabytes or something. So the app either lets you choose whatever the JPEG's original size is, right. or just two megabytes, which is the default small right. size. It doesn't have a lot of settings. It's not particularly fine-tuned, but it works. It does the trick. And, and it's quick, and yeah, that's really all that matters. It's nice. It does have a feature that lets you shoot through the camera if you want to set it up that way. 
that doesn't work as well. Yeah, it's a little lacking. It doesn't let you click to focus, which I would really like because it seems like it would be a pretty easy, you know, app upgrade for them. And then you could actually use it for a function of, you know, being able to shoot. Whereas now you could do it for maybe a tabletop shoot, but that's about it because you can't change your focus point. So it's okay, but the actual sending it to your phone, Quick, the images, nice, works well. that's nice. Excellent. We like it. So we're down here at Widow Jane, which is a combination whiskey distillery and also chocolate bar maker. And they have got this sort of new agey bean to bar concept, which is just one of those things that just takes the farm to table thing just like a little bit too far. Isn't that really how chocolate works all the time? Beans? Bar? 